So, we are talking about our unit load method and we have applied to one beam problem and another frame problem both are statically determinant type. So, next job is uh, we will apply the method to a statically indeterminate problem. Now, we can take a beam problem at the beginning later on we, we can switch over to a frame type of problem. So, that will give more or less a wide coverage of the application of this method for statically determinant as well as indeterminate type of problem. So, we can say this unit load method applied to your right. So, statically in event structure we want to solve by unit load method. Now, what we can do? We can take a beam problem like this. Um, Right. So, uh, say this is three meter, this is three meter, this is four meter, and the load say one twenty kilo newton. Right. You can say this is A, it is B, it is C, under the load it is D. So, this is a two span beam, A B one span, B C another span, three supports, this support is hinge, they are roller. Now, here uh, we will get two unknowns horizontal vertical horizontal in that case it will be 0. Uh, so, one vertical reaction will be there plus at B and C will get vertical reaction. So, 3 vertical reaction plus 1 horizontal reaction. So, it will be 3 plus 1 4 and we have the equation of statics 3 right. So, 1 extra or we can say the support at C we can remove. If we remove it will be simply supported beam with a load, only one overhang part will be there. So, that problem is a standard typical uh, simply supported beam problem with a central load, only some overhang part will be there without any load. So, that problem we know it is a determinant problem. So, this reaction is the additional reaction at C or other option the support B we can remove, then it will be simply supported beam with some load at any point. See, the, this reaction is the only additional unknown. So, actually this problem is uh, not a determinate problem, because uh, one of the reaction is becoming extra. So, that may be in the form of C or in the form of B. So, this extra reaction, so we have three equation of statics. If we have three uh, unknown reactions, it will just match, it will be a determinant one and any increase in number of reaction. So, 3 to it became 4. So, extra here 1 means 1 degree of statical, statically indeterminacy is there in this structure. So, that one additional unknown if we can determine, uh, then we can solve the problem. Say uh, this, this re reaction R B produced by the support B if we know numerically, say it is 120, if someone tell uh, that reaction will be say some value 90 kilo Newton. So, we can just remove that put 90 kilo Newton, the problem will be a determinant one, it will be just like a determinant one, we can solve it. 
So, our job is we have to find out the value of the reaction, that additional uh, support reaction. If that is known, we can solve the problem. Now, this problem we can handle like this. So, this the actual structure. It is 120 kilo Newton and this is R B. So, this is the actual structure only the support at B I have removed instead instead of that I am putting a reaction and that reaction whatever this support will supply it is R B. Unfortunately, this R B value is not known at this level. Right. So, that value anyhow we have to find out. Now, how we will find out? So, this problem uh, again, so this is defined in that form. So, uh, 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 this problem can be defined again. So, if we just combine together, uh, we are supposed to get this one or the actual problem. So, it is a simply supported beam subjected to 120 kilo Newton and another case it is R B. So, both the case if we superpose, we are supposed to get R B 120 together or this is the actual problem. So, or we can say the actual problem we are splitted into two part one is due to 120 another part is due to R B right. Now, 120 no problem we can go ahead this R B part is still a difficult thing. Now, here uh, we have to take the help of deformation of the structure because earlier also we have tried to handle a statically indeterminate problem we have tried to find out deflection of the structure at some important point where the deflection is known and what are those points? Those points are basically some point where there are some support. So, displacement should be 0 there due to the different load. Now, here this is the actual support. So, there should be no deflection along the vertical direction. Now, in due to 120 there should be some deformation here and due to R B there will be some deformation and this deformation and this deformation should be equal and opposite. So, that it will cancel together and the deflection should be 0 at B because it is a real support. Now, the numerical value of deflection at this point due to 120 we can calculate numerically, but this value we cannot calculate numerically, but we can say uh, we can put one unit load instead of R B and whatever deflection will be there that multiplied by R B will be the deflection there. So, this structure is subjected to R B. So, deflection will be a function of R B or we can say there is a one unit load. So, whatever deflection will get that multiplied by R B will be the deflection due to R B. So, that deflection and this deflection should match and it should be equal to 0. Okay. Now, this part if I take in that manner, say so again uh, I shall draw so it was one twenty. Right, say if it is A, uh, so there was some point, it was B, there was some point C, and this point we have defined D. So 
the same point it is A, D, B and C. Now, we know B there is a support and deflection will be equal to 0. Now, due to 120 kilo Newton, uh, we can find out the deflection and here we will find out the deflection using unit load method. So, what we have to do? We have to again calculate m small m divided by E i d x integration. So, under 120 kilo Newton, we will get a set of bending moment that is capital M and due to one unit load, there will be a set of moment small m. If we combine, we will get the deflection at B plus if there is a one unit load and if we want to find out deflection under this load. So, capital M small m will be small m. Actually, this is not the one unit load. Here, rather there is one reactive force R B. So, it will be 1 into R B into this one. If we multiply, we will get another set of deflection. So, those deflection should be equal and opposite. Right. So, we can just write segment wise, uh, then say you write segments. So, one part is A D, another part is D B, another part is B C, right. So, you make origin. limits ok. Now, you make the origin as 0 it will be 0 to 3 meter uh, origin is A and 0 to 3 and D B uh, which origin you will take you can take D you can take A. can take a. So, origin will be 3 to 6 and B C definitely will take C and it will be 0 to 4. Right. So, from this side we will take and if it is 120 what will be the reactive force here? This is 120 into 3 and this will be uh, 3, 3, 6, 10. So, this reaction will be uh, it will be 120 uh, divided by 10 into 3, it will be 36, right. So, if you take moment 120 into 3 divided by 10. So, it will be uh, the 0 will be there 3 into 12, 36 and this side it will be so, 20 it will go another 16 will be minus 16 means 84 right and here it will be uh, if you take moment out here. So, this is 4. So, it will be 4 divided by 10. it will be 0 0.6 or from this side it is uh, 6 into 1 6 divided by 10 0 0.6. Now, capital M if we put here, so it will be 84 x and the next segment will be 84 x minus 120 x minus 3 right. eighty four into x here also eighty four into x minus 120 this is x minus 3 and this part will be 36 into x. 
So, this part we can redefine, we can write uh, 84 x minus 120 x. So, it will be this set 16 plus 20. So, this part we can redefine as uh, minus minus plus. So, 360 minus um, 36 x right, right. So, this part we can write in that manner. Now, segment wise we have a written the expression of capital M. Capital M is produced by the actual applied load. Here, there is only one load. Uh, in other situation, it be more than one load. So, due to the actual applied load, M we have generated. Now, this part for the unit load at B, uh, the reactions are known. So, we can find out the expression for small m. Now, small m we can write it here or we can make a separate table. So, it will be again segments. So, it is A D, D B and B C and this is small m. Now, it will be how much? It will be 0.4 x, second part is also 0.4 x, third part is 0.6 x, right. So, if you come to that, it will be 0.6 x, this will be 0.4 x, ok. Unit load, uh, it is 0.4 up to here, it, it will be. Yes. So, we are not crossing that limit. Here, the value will be 0.4 into at, at, at this point, it will be how much? 336. So, 0.24. So, this side will be 0.6 into 4, 0.24. So, both the end it should match. Now, this is one set, and M, if I put here, okay, already we have written just for convenience, if I put 84 x, this part is 360 minus 36 x, this was 36 x, uh, that already you have taken down. Now, we can say delta due to the, uh, delta due to the applied load. Right. Say if it is delta one, so it will be m m i dx integral. Now already m m already we have in front of us capital m small m. So if we just multiply this into this zero to three, this into this uh, three to six, this into this zero to four, integrate, you will get delta one. This is what m small m, what is capital M, what is small m? Capital M is due to this, small m is due to that. So, means we will get deflection at this point due to 120 kilo Newton, right. So, there is a load 120 and we are interested for finding out the deflection at B. So, that will be obtained by m generated by this and small m generated by one unit load at B and whatever we have written, this is this part. Now, we will get some deflection and that deflection should be our actual problem was like this, there is 120 load and that should be balanced by this R B, right. Now, R B is not known, but what would be the value of deflection due to R B? If we put one unit load here, the deflection due to one unit load, if we magnify that by R B, that will be the deflection. So, deflection produced by R B 
will be equal to deflection produced by one unit load here multiplied by R B. Right. So, that part we can say though the directions are different if I put the reaction in the other way. So, that deflection it is a matter of sign convention. So, delta 2 it will be uh, So, capital M is the moment produced by 120 kilo Newton. If we produce, if we put R B and get the moment expression, that moment expression will be M R B that if we multiply it with M by E i that will be the deflection at that point. Here this set is giving capital M. Now, this set if we give M R B. Now, this M into your small m, we are getting deflection produced here and m and unit load if we produce, you will get the deflection there. Now, unfortunately, this part is not known. Now, this part we can say R B Now, M R B is moment produced by R B. Now, what is M? Small m moment produced by unit load. So, instead of R B, if we put one unit load, we are we are getting the moment expression small m. So, actual load is R B. So, if we multiply with that, that should be equal to this one M R B. Is it clear this part? On the structure, here it is R B. If we put not R B, one unit means uh, whatever effect we will get due to unit load, due to R B, it will be just R B times. If it is one unit, whatever moment you will get, if it is 10, it will be just 10 times. If it is 20, it will be 20 times. Now, no, that part will take care. Okay. So, if we put R V in the reverse manner. So, here the problem is simple we are taking R V intelligently in, in the upper di direction. So, this value and this value automatically it will be uh, opposite. So, numerically we can put the value, but if we follow mechanically we will put the load all the load in a downward direction. So, R B. So, the deflection and this deflection should be just we will add algebraically and that should be equal to 0. Right. Uh, so, if we take the uh, R B in a reverse manner, um, or if, if you are serious about the sign, we can take the sign here. Okay. Okay, so, the small m is due to a unit load applied at the downward direction. So, if the load is not one unit, if it is R b in the opposite direction, so it should be multiplied with a minus R b. Okay, no? So, here we can multiply it with a minus 1 or if the R b is in if we take in a downward direction automatically sign part will be taken care of. So, we need not take the minus. So, the whole quantity we can write R B is the unknown part. Here we can write M M D X divided by Y. Yeah. Right. Now this delta one plus delta two, it should be equal to zero there. Now if we put here, it will be basically M M Y e D X R B M M e i d x that will be 0. Uh, small m, small m. 
already we have the it is there again in front of us right so uh, basically we have to take we have what we have done we have removed the support put the support reaction uh, then uh, uh, we have written the expression of capital m due to really applied load externally without the support reaction now another set of m uh, we have written for putting a unit load corresponding to rb in the positive direction means downward we have put now some expression for that we got so this capital m small m ei will be delta 1 that will be produced by the really externally applied load without the support reaction now del 2 is the deflection due to the support reaction only so total deflection if we combine the deflection should be zero because it is a place where there is a real support so it will not allow to move upward or downward so delta 1 plus delta 2 should be zero now what will be delta 2 it will be uh, the capital m generated by rb and one unit load there right so one unit load is downward now uh, this m r b for the for the support reaction that part we can't readily get but that we can express one into r b plus or minus form so we are writing r b into m so r b is taken common so it will be m m uh, small m small m d x e i so this part you can take minus if we exactly follow that case or uh, uh, later on we will not follow the uh, direction so here it is 120 we will just put same direction so uh, without knowing so if it is uh, wrong we will get a negative value right so this one if i put in that direction we are supposed to put this is minus so if we put here minus so rb that side if it will go it will be automatically give some positive value but if we just put that direction this direction so it will be plus and automatically rb will be negative means negative means it will not be this way it will be this way so automatically it will be taken care of so rb this value we can calculate because m small m already known so numerically we can calculate through integration of the different zone here also we can calculate so this two para this quantity and this quantity will be some numerical quantity and this part will go th that side and this part you have to divide automatically we will get some numerical value of rb now this plus minus part already i have defined here okay so uh, this is a simple problem we can get so we are putting it here so in that case we can put a negative one negative one already we will get otherwise if we just just follow in a mechanical way not bothering about the sign so uh, we are putting one unit load rb also in that direction it will be all plus plus automatically it will minus so there it will give the indication the way you have taken all downward it is not downward it will be upward okay now this part i am not explicitly calculating putting capital m and small m because this part i think with that you can calculate now this rb we can say it is in that case minus your m small m ei dx m m ei dx right you can calculate So, once R B will be available, definitely you can uh, go ahead for the solution of the actual problem. Say so this is the problem 120 numerical if you know that. So, it will be a simply supported problem with two loads. You can find out the reaction for the two loads, calculate shear force bending moment, everything you can find out. Now, here I want to explain that for. 
say this equation I want to uh, define again delta 1 plus delta 2 equal to 0. So, we have written here m small m i integral d x plus r b Now, what we can do uh, the small m e i that part is a common part. So, if we just take common it will be m plus r b small m m by e i d x is equal to 0. Now, we can say uh, this is m total now these two quantities basically we uh, obtain in a separate manner this part we have defined as the deflection due to the applied load without uh, without the resistance at b due to the support there now this part is the deflection produced by the reaction given by the support at B. So, this deflection and this total, total deflection delta 1 plus delta should, should be 0 because there is a real support. Now, from there we came. So, if we combine, so it can be written in that manner. So, the small m e i d x small m e i d x that part we have taken common and this part is m r b small m. Now, m r b small m what is capital M? It is produced by 120 that is externally applied load. What is r b m? r b m the small m is due to unit load. So, r b m will be produced by the uh, this is basically the moment produced by r b. So, if you take a, uh, a st structure there will be some actual load plus r b. So, actual moment will be we are defining it is m total. So, m total is the reaction as well as the applied load total effect is m total. So, this total we have split it into that and again combined right, but we can take the total form because here total if we split one part is m another part is r b into m and this part we can calculate not this one. So, it will be in a common form from there we have to. So, we can start from here also instead of coming from different component combining we can take the effect everything say due to the load uh, actual load due to the reaction it may be more than one reaction rather we will take a problem where number of reaction will be more. So, due to the external load we will get m due to the reaction we will get uh, 2 3 components. So, if we combine we will get m total. Now, this m total into m e i that will be 0. Now, that part we, we cannot use in this form we have to basically split and we will get this form of equation from there this r b or uh, other reactions we have to find out we can determine. Now, this is basically the procedure. Now, I will take a uh, take an example uh, of a frame. The idea is uh, the technique can be applied to a frame type of case number 1, number 2 uh, the reactions it may be more than uh, 1, it may be 2, it may be 3. So, for a problem having statical static degree of statical integer means if it is more than 1 that type of case also we can handle. So, we will consider the same portal frame problem uh, what we have taken in our earlier class, but it was determinant 1 we can change the support it will be in determinant 1. So, Uh, 
right. So, this is 5 meter, 3 meter, 3 meter, 3 meter, 4.5 meter same problem only the supports are clamped not a hinge and a roll. The load was how much? This was 48 horizontal 48 96. Right. Now, here this is a clamped means three reaction component will be there horizontal, vertical plus moment that will be three. So, total reaction is three plus three six. So, three extra. So, degree we say degree of indeterminacy means how many extra? Both side fixed. Both side fixed. So, uh, uh, after three it is another three. So, three extra three is the degree of indeterminacy. So, the problem cannot be solved because once the reaction cannot be determined we cannot go inside. Okay. Now, it can be, uh, so what we have to do? We have to uh, release some of the uh, restrain and instead of that we have to put some reactive force and initially those, re those reactive force will be unknown and our job is to find out those reactive forces. Once that will be known, we, we can go inside. So, three uh, a restrain we have to replace and put some reactive force. So, one of the simple option is at this end all the restrain we can release and put some reactive force there. Right. So, this problem we can just define Right. So, we can say it is um, this is R D Y R D X and you can say it is R D Z. Right. So, these are the applied load, real load plus this clamped support we have just removed, but we can't remove we have to compensate that with some support reaction. So, it was A, B, C and D, it is D, we are writing reaction at D, reaction at D, reaction at D, it is along x direction. So, we are putting x, it is along y, it is y, it is along z, it is z, z means there is a moment, moment is also a vector and vector is defined by the, it is if we take a right handed screw, it will move along z direction. We, we sometimes we put a force also with two arrow to define a moment. So, here there is a uh, reaction like this. Now, this problem will be solved in that manner. Uh, we will take the frame, put the actual load 96 and 48 without support reaction and that will give capital M, right. So, this is it will give the expression of capital M, capital M is moment generated by actual load without this reactive forces. So, here to here it will be moment 0, it will be 0, it will be 0, right. So, here 96 means we will get 96, here 48 means 48. Now, if you take moment 48 into this side 96 into that one, so moment will not match. So, that moment will be there. So, here you can start that moment into this force into that distance. So, like this you will get some moment, some moment, some moment here this part will be 0. So, you can calculate the expression of the capital M. Now, we have to take 
a frame like this, we have to put one unit load, say it will give small m. So, if you give 1, this will be 1, right. So, uh, so 1 will be 1 and vertical force, there is no force, it will be 0, but this 1 and 1 gap is 7.5 minus 5, 2.5. So, 2.5 into 1, that moment will be generated here, right. So, if there is a force, that force will generate a moment here. So, definitely we will get some moment inside that. We can go for the detail of this. Similarly, we can rather we have to apply one unit load, you have to apply one unit moment and that will give your m 2 that will give your m 3. So, try to come to this problem. So, it is due to the external load m there are three reactions. So, first one will get m another two m 2 one unit moment m 3. Now, due to that load due to this moment for uh, what will be the expression of this uh, m 1 m 2 m 3 capital M that part we can determine segment wise because here one of the end is clamped. So, we can find out the reaction support reaction including the moment. So, zone wise we can we can make the nice table capital M small m m 1 m 2 m 3 like that. Now, here there are three unknowns. So, what will be the total m? So, m total it will be capital M plus R d x into m 1 R d y m 2 R d z m 3 right. Because this case this is the case. So, due to that it is m due to this this multiplied by R d x this one this one multiplied by this one and the last one this one multiplied by uh, R d z right. So, these are the quantity we multiply with m 1 m 2 m 3 plus m. So, that will be the total m right. Now, what will be the deflection along horizontal direction at d? It will be 0, vertical direction it will be 0, rotation will be also 0. So, we can say delta d x that is 0 that is how much your m total into m 1 by E i T x right. Now, m total if we substitute it will be m to your m 1 E i d x it will be m 1 m 1 e i d x it will be r d x it will be r d y m 1 m 2 e i d x r d z it will be m 1 m 3 e i d x right. So, if you expand that, so it will be m m 1 e i small m 1 r d x m 1. So, r d y m 2 m 1 e i r d 2 m 3 m 1 e i d x right. So, if you put, so whole quantity will be equal to this will be equal to 0, is it ok. Now, the integral you can calculate only the uh, the factor r d x r d y r d z they are basically the unknown. Now, this is deflection along x is 0 in a similar manner we can write delta 
at d along y equal to 0. So, it will be how much? It will be total moment into m 2 by E i d x. Now, if we put the value, it should be your capital M small m 2 E i d x plus your r d x here it will be m 1 it will be m 2 e i d x plus r d y m 2 m 2 e i d x plus r d z m 3 m 2 e i d x will be equal to 0. Similarly, if we make delta d z it is basically theta z that will be equal to 0 right. So, that part will be your m total into m 3 divided by e i into d x right. So, that should be equal to 0. So, if you expand again you will get say m m 3 e i d x r d x m 3 uh, it is m 1 m 3 e i d x uh, here it will be r d y it will be m 2 m 3 is a common factor e i d x plus integral of it is r d z it will be m 3 again m 3 divided by e i d x that will be equal to 0. Is it clear what is going on? Because capital M is due to the load without the reaction, but reactions are there, but reactions values are not known. So, we are putting one, one unit of uh, load or moment corresponding to the reactions and we are getting m 1, m 2, m 3. So, those, those moments if we just multiply it with the actual value of the reaction, we are supposed to get the moment contributed by the support reactions. So, all the component if we add due to the actual load plus the reaction that will be the total m. So, that multiplied by m 1 will be the deflection along m 1, m 2 along m 2 means second direction, m 3 means in the third direction, the rotational direction. So, all the quantities are 0, but that form we can keep. So, capital M part we are splitting and we will get more or less this form that M M 2 by E i this part we can calculate. So, this is basically the external load will produce a deflection along your direction 2 means along y and this is M 1 M 2 means if we apply one unit load along x, how much will be the deflection along y direction. So, actual load along x is r d x. So, that multiplied multiplied by this factor. Now, this part is uh, m 2 is one unit load along y and multiplied by m 2 means in that direction what will be the deflection, but load is not one it is r d into m 2 into this one. Similarly, m 3 is one unit moment actual moment is this one. So, that is the effect so, if we multiply it by m 2 means deflection along y direction. So, total effect should be equal to 0. So, if we just write these three equations. So, this is one of the equation, this is one of uh, the uh, second equation and at the beginning we have written this equation. So, these three equations you will see uh, these components are all known only the multiplier part is unknown. So, three unknowns and three equations. Only calculation of this part is quite involved. Just it has so many integral and one integral if we divide if we take that frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 segments right. So, if we expand it will lead to 5 integral 0 to 4.5 then 4.5 to 7.5 0 to 3 0 to 3 0 to 5 
So, 5 components are there, but in many cases we will be fortunate if we get 0 either in capital M or small m. So, 5 will reduce to somewhere 4, 3, 1, 2, we are very unfortunate all 5 we have to calculate. So, it will be uh, 1, 1 component. So, all these components you can calculate, but there are some similarities say m 1, m 2 here, uh, here uh, m 2, m 2 it is m 3, uh, m 2 say this m 3, m 2, m 2, m 3 here it is a common type of calculation. You can multiply m 2, m 3 or m 3, m 2 it is same. More or less uh, if we write in a systematic manner, you will find some of the parameters already you have calculated for these integrals. So, if we uh, write in a systematic manner, so what will be happening? So, whole uh, it will be 3 equations with 3 unknowns, but calculation of this part definitely it will take little time and if you solve that, you will get the reactive forces. Right. So, here there are two objectives number one uh, the unknowns are not one earlier it was only one and directly you have tried to match. So, here mechanically we are putting the three reactions replacing that putting one one unit of uh, force or moment in a separate level getting m 1, m 2, m 3 and straight away in terms of m total that that was splitted and we got in this form plus problem is applied to a frame type of case. Now, how we will get the detailed expression of capital M, small m 1, m 2, m 3 uh, that part okay, uh, we can handle in the tutorial class. Now, with that uh, we are closing today, next class it will be a different type of problem. Nineteen fifty one, a young nation aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar Committee that was set up in 1945 to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. As top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested venerable institute of learning. With the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. 
The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur, set in sylvan surroundings, is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre-optic-linked residential quarters for the faculty to the web-enabled hostel rooms for the students. At IIT Kharagpur, lush green bowers of tranquility coexist with smart cards and ATMs. Spread over 690 hectares of sprawling cyber habitat, 120 kilometers from Kolkata, IIT Kharagpur is one of the largest network campuses in Asia. Just the academic complexes itself spreads over a built-up area of about 2 million square feet, of which 150,000 square feet is the new complex that commemorates the Golden Jubilee celebrations. And that's not all. It is the only IIT to have conquered territory beyond its own through cutting-edge courses offered in its extension campuses at Kolkata and Bhubaneswar. IIT Kharagpur is not just about its large campus, but its diverse range of activities. It offers the widest spectrum of disciplines, ranging from aerospace, biotechnology, cryogenics, indeed in this golden jubilee year, as the celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. For him, IIT Kharagpur was always more than just an institute of technology. In his own immortal words, it is indeed a fine monument of modern India.